All right, Aru. Harns. We're back to Harns Knives. I haven't done a Harns in a while. And let me see if it's got anything interesting to say on the box. Well, it's a giant silkworm. Wow, looks just like a knife to me. That's strange. Okay, what else? 14C28 in, 3.15 inch length blade. That's a lie. And yes, natural G10 transparent cayenne, whatever. 3.14 ounces and under 8 ounces overall. Okay, let's look at the 3.15 inch blade. Okay, so hold on. Yeah, where the thumb stud ends is 3.15 inches. We still got a long way to go to Tipperary there, boys. I think we're, I think we're at 3.37 inches all day long. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I might go 3.25 for cutting edge. I don't know. And in the middle of that choil is 3.5, so... I mean, for for a while, I didn't even get it because I thought, ah, three inch blade, seven inch overall, hell with it. But no, it's seven, yeah, it's seven and three quarters. So they weren't off on the overall length, but that blade, longer than that, buddy, is longer than that. And it comes in different colors. Um, here's this one. So I printed this page out instead of this one because you get to see this knife. But this one is kind of this yellow and black G10 thing. So $37.99, I got mine on White Mountain Knives. I just thought it was really cool. I saw it on there, and, you know, that looks like a lifesaver that's tropical fruit or something. You could just break off a piece of that, and it'd be delicious. <laughs> it's so strange. It looks like candy. But it's, it's intriguing. I, I don't mind this, and there's some people that don't like this natural jade. But I like it, this natural G10 translucent look. But I, I do like it. Got a, eh, yeah, you got a choil you can get up on there. And the blade shape is interesting to me. Okay, got this little bit of a sweep on the blade. Uh, and so piercing, yeah, it could do that. Probably not, you know, actually made for that as much as maybe being more slicey and oh well we're gonna slice something let's get a piece of paper out so we can slice something okay 14c 28n sandvik steel so okay that's reasonably sharp um i've i've had sharper ones but uh, it's a good working edge right now it'd be easy to touch up and take it to the next level you got jimping on the top of the scales. You got jimping on the top of the blade. You can run right up here. You can work close up. It's not a big knife. And obviously it's not a real heavy knife. And it's got an axis type lock. So you can swing it shut, swing it open. However you want to do that. Or um, you can kick it open with a thumb. Or with the middle finger flick. Or you could weigh the damn thing. Hold on, let's weigh it. Giant silkworm. Oh, can we... Let's make it in bigger letters. I love billboarding. My favorite. Um, okay, 88 grams. Jeez. 3.1 ounces. 3.1 ounces. So, it's right at 3. Okay, that's pretty light. No backspacer. Pretty chunky little standoffs there. And that doesn't even look all the way screwed in there, does it? Hmm. Well, we're going to take it apart and put it back together. So we'll fix whatever that is all about. Oh, I guess you can swap that over. Deep carry, pocket clip, left or right hand. Be nice if they had flat screws. It'd be nice if they had screwed that all the way back in. <laughs> Actually, come here. Damn it. I wonder if that's a reason for that. No, there's no reason for it. It just wasn't all the way screwed in. Now it is. Hmm, that's weird. Um, lanyard hole, so you can put a lanyard on it. But I just thought it was interesting. You know what? I mean, if this was 3.8 inch blade and like 8.7 overall length, I'd like it even more. 
and put a backspacer on it, I'd like it a whole bunch. And you know what? These scales die up really nice. So, and look at those things. Look at them. Uh, that is so wild. Uh, pump, 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 pump. Um, you know, that, that, I like that. I think that's cool. I like that. Um, uh, maybe kind of, you know, have you ever seen caterpillars that have these kind? Yeah, I have. So I don't know what silkworms look like. I haven't seen one. Um, but yeah, I don't live in the Orient either. Okay. So, and this is a giant, by the way, a giant silkworm. So uh, I don't understand that whole concept. And then Sandvik steel. So I like it because it's a real stainless. And so it'd be less likely to have corrosion problems. Not like it can't, but it's less likely. Doesn't come in a real fancy box, just pretty plain there. But it's a rock and all 30, what, $37.99. And then use discount code LTK and get another $3.00. Um, and 79 cents off, whatever. So you're at under $35. And you got a Sandvik steel knife that it's got a nice little, you know. And th so I'm sure the spring rolls around and tucks into the liner and all that kind of crap. If I even want to get into that. Yeah, because then you got to roll this bar back and then knock it through that hole and everything. I may just take one of the scales off and just kind of give you a look-see, and that's about it. Um, and, and, you know, you can see the liners are just coming back. They're anchored in here to reinforce this whole pivot area, etc. So, I mean, I wouldn't consider it to be a heavy-use knife, but, uh, oh, it's I think it's solid enough for most tasks and let me see what's the design flow look like on this not too shabby and blade to handle length not too far off i can't touch that but yeah flow is nice it's interesting i i, I got it because i like the design some of the harns knives the blazer and some others yeah i really like some of them no i can pass on but this one i thought was cool Ergos, well, you, you're kind of pushed into a canoe here. So uh, I can get all my fingers in there and I'm pretty locked in. So, and if I move up, then I got extra room back here. But this way, I'm fine. Reverse grip, yeah, it's very comfortable. Reverse grip, actually. So uh, balance is right under there, isn't it? So, okay. That's what that's all about. So that's nice. Right and left hand, deep carry, lanyard hole, um, axis lock, real easy, fidget friendly, um, centered up, no blade play, nothing going on there, no movement on that uh, lock. So I, I like it. I, I just think, you know, for a $34, $35 shooter, um, it's interesting. Might be worth your time. Not like you got a big, huge investment in it. That's for sure. So obviously we're going to have a number six involved with here because uh, of the way this is. So I'll pull off this backside, I guess. I don't know if I want to take the springs off. Because, you know, to pull everything apart, you got to take both the front and back scales off. You got to pull the spring off the front, the Omega spring or whatever, off the front and the back. And go through all kinds of rigmarole, and I don't know if I want to do that, to tell you the truth. Every time I get into these knives that have that uh, set up, it can be kind of a pain. Let me, i got to rid myself of this screw here because it's going all the way through, but I don't think the other screw has anything to do with anything as far as holding this thing together. Okay, let me pull this off. So, yeah, this pulls apart, and this has clearance here and all that kind of stuff. So there's this, okay? And there's that screw just fell out 
for the pocket clip. Um, so you can see the Omega spring, how it's set up. I mean, it's obvious, uh, pretty much the same as any of the access lock type knives. Um, now looking underneath to see if I can, if I can see if they're washers or bearings. And I'm going to say it looks like washers to me. The best I can, I can see. And I really don't want to take the, cause I'm going to have to knock this pivot out, push it through from here, pull that out and undo this to pull, um, this away. And I don't know if I want to go through all that uh, just to look at a washer on that blade. So these are not ones that I'm, I enjoy disassembling because reassembling can be tricky as well. But there you go with that. It's, it's as fur as I'm going to go. But you get to see that's a pretty thick steel piece to reinforce that there. And, you know, I'm looking more at that pivot, and it does look like bronze washers, which is probably normal for most axis lock knives, actually. Yeah, I mean, it looks, looks, looks pretty good. And, you know, you've got this D-shaped pivot here, which means this uh, logo will stay centered, and you can always take your, your pivot screw out, because uh, that won't be difficult, but so... In here, this body screw screws in to hold on to that uh, liner that reinforces that. And yeah, um, actually not a bad little setup, especially for as inexpensive as the knife is. Let me see if I got this set down here. Okay, now I do. So back with this. This is called my... Uh, Mr. Chicken, you know what uh, approach to disassembly? Because like I don't want it, I don't want to go down that road. I've been down that road so many times. Um, yeah, hold on, let's get this re-engaged with the uh, liner in here with the steel liner. And yes, we're all locked up there. And all the rest of these crazy sons of guns. Okay, this one is a body screw. So get in there, buddy. And so they're number sixes. And I can live with that because this knife is not very expensive. So I understand they're not going to go big time on that. Um, ooh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's uh, let's close the knife. Ooh, I got that one screwed down tight, don't I? Yeah, you can tell that's washers because washers really freak out uh, with just a little bit too much pressure on that pivot. That can lock them up pretty good. The action. And here we go. Okay, so. Yes, and I backed it off a little. Okay, now we're back to square now, but are we, are we, uh, oh, we're centered. Okay, let me see if we got any play. Nope. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're good. Man, that just, that just went home, didn't it? Boom, and it's, what? Come on, dude. Back to the corral. Wow, just like it was tucking itself in. Okay, hey, that's good. Rather be lucky than good. Silkworm. Not just a silkworm, by the way. It's a giant, giant silkworm. I have fun with these uh, budget shooters uh, from these not-so-well-known manufacturers. I think they're a blast. Um, I don't know. You don't have a lot of money in them. If you, you know, you lose it or, you know, somebody that is a buddy of yours really likes it, you could give it to them. You ain't going to, you know, collapse financially from this burden, my friend. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of fun. I mean, to have a number of knives and you don't really have a lot of money in any of them, you can just grab and go. And these scales, 
They're not going to show a lot of wear and scratches and garbage. I mean, depending on how abusive you are, um, you know, so they stand up too. Uh, I don't know. I just have a hell of a lot of fun. And you guys know, I mean, you get into the Ganzo knives and some of the others and hell, they're good. They're good knives. They're damn good users and they're put together pretty damn well. Um, and for the money, I mean, go figure. I remember the bad old days when you were like $60, $70 in a knife before you even started. Now you can be 19 to 35 bucks and get a damn good knife. Really, as far as I'm concerned, depends on your definition, but I mean, I take them apart, I use them, I, you know, I look at all the knives from 500 bucks down to $15, and I'll tell you what, seems all right to me. I'm going to let you go. Hey, subscribe to my channel if you would, that'd be helpful. I really appreciate that, if you would consider doing that, and keep up with Mr. Crazy Man. As he's doing Harns Knives and Kun Wu and, you know, Keen Natter and <laughs> with Savivi, Two Sun Knives, all the insanity that goes on here, as well as normal knives. We almost do some normal things on this channel as well. And just remember this, we love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.